Uh, so as you can see, today we are visiting uh, Sea Life Centre Scarborough. So yeah, I'm going to take you on a walk through around this country. So in our first tank here, we have a lobster. So we've got the back here. We also have some sand smelts. Gold thing glass. And a funny one with the funny nose. And a snipe fish. Where, well, Luke? Here. Those orange ones. See how they've got the long nose? So here's a snipe fish. There's our lobster. So yeah, we are annual bass holders, so it's one pound to enter. How much was it for adults, Luke? £16.50 for adults. So yeah, we're coming to enter our first room. There's one way uh, system in place to help with social distancing. And our first place we're going to stop at is the coastal waters. So the bays and inlets and sheltered waters of the coastline, which have the rays in. And it's themed like a Viking boat, which is pretty cool. So yeah, there's 13 different species of rays at the Sea Life Sanctuary. So in here we have the different types of rays. We have the short nose electric ray, the round or skate, the yellow sting ray, the winter skate, the bull nose ray, the pelagic sting ray, the clear nose skate, the blunt nose stingray and a couple of others so yeah we'll go and see if we can find them so this here is the nurse hound shark which are nearly threatened in the wild and here we have the turbot that's also threatened the turbots tend to eat small fish and they wait in the seabed, as you can see down here, until the prey come close enough. Here we have a close-up of the European sea bass. There's quite a few of them here, as you can see, underneath us. They are native to western and southern Europe coasts and Africa's northern coasts, even though they're called Europe sea bass. But yeah, they tend to eat uh, small fish and invertebrates. Here we have the Baron Rass, the multicoloured one here, which is pretty beautiful, just swimming away now. They can grow up to 50 centimetres long, and they're actually used in salmon farms to eat the rice off the salmon, which is pretty cool. And yeah, they are native to the UK and live off the coastline. But yeah, I like that one, it's got a cool little mohawk. But yeah, we're going to leave this area now and move on to the rest of the sea life sanctuary. Moving on our tour through the sea lion century, we now have the jellyfish section. So yeah, we'll go and see what we can find. So in here we have the baby moon jellyfish. That's so cool. And these were actually born here. There must be about 50 of them. They are commonly found all around the British coastline. And opposite from the baby moon jellyfish, we actually have the moon jellyfish. So obviously they are they are a bit bigger. They are well they can grow up to 40 centimetres. And they live in temperate oceans around the world. Right, so moving on, we have the upside down jellyfish. Well, as you can see, hence their name, they are upside down. They mainly live in the Indo Pacific 
and the Caribbean Oceans. They have a symbolic relationship with algae as they are photosynthetic so the algae live within them and yeah the jellyfish provide the algae a safe place to live and feed off which is pretty cool right so up next is the turtle rescue area of the sea life sanctuary but unfortunately due to the social distancing this area is not in service which is unfortunate so yeah what you would do is you'd come and name and weigh your turtle in the station one you'd then come over to station two and scan an x-ray of it to make sure the turtle is safe then you go back to station three and you'd feed the turtle and then finally you'd go to the rehydration, rehydration station and make sure it's well fed but yeah like I said this area is currently not in service so we're now going to enter Penguin Island where you can walk through with the penguins let's go and do it so yeah unfortunately at the moment the Penguin Island walkthrough area is actually closed due to a UK alert for avian flu as you can see here so yeah, that's been closed uh, for our safety and their safety, which is unfortunate, but yeah, we'll go down and take a closer look, as you can just see them over there. But yeah, we're going to go take a route down this path. It's also one way as well at the moment, due to COVID, I'm guessing, like most other places. There is also uh, a mini adventure golf here, but also that seems shut at the moment. It wasn't actually advertised that the Penguin Island walkthrough was closed on the website, which is a shame, so that probably could do with better advertising, but yeah, we're going to go down and check the rest out. So we're now here at the underwater viewing area. He's quick. Yeah, they are, quite, they are quick, aren't they? Yeah. As you can see, the water is a bit... Wow, he is quick. <laughs> As you can see, the water is a bit murky, unfortunately, so you can't really see much. But they like to go for a swim by the looks of it. So yeah, the penguins here are the Humboldt penguins. And they're actually a threatened species at the moment. And this is mainly due to three reasons. Which are overfishing of their food. As they obviously like to eat fish. Uh, the second reason is climate change. And the third reason is habitat loss. So these are also the same penguins you'll find in London Zoo. Go check out my vlog for that if you want to see some epic penguin footage because the penguin habitat there is the largest in England. But yeah, here is some close up footage for you. And here is where you would normally be able to walk through. But like I said earlier, that's closed unfortunately. And all the penguins here are actually named after cartoon characters. So over at the back here we have where the penguins uh, sleep. And as you can see they're actually partnered up. So we have Leia and Kev who are partnered up. Mace and Rico. We have some others. Pebbles and Pingu. I just love the name Pingu. It's so cool. Pinky and Gonzo. So yeah, we're going to go and move on and check out the rest of sea life. It's Carver. So we just left Penguin Island and listen to this, we can actually hear some Open Towers music being played which is pretty cool. Obviously it's owned by Merlin as well so you can use your Merlin Pass here which is great. And they also have a little playground here as well. There's also plenty of hand sanitizer stations, we've seen about three so far so that's great for the social distancing and Covid-19 restrictions. So yeah, there's plenty of things to do for the families, a little uh, playground here, there's normally a shop at the back here as well. But that's closed unfortunately at the moment and there's great views of Scarborough Beach and the sea. So yeah, up next is the seal pool and the seal rescue and the otters. So yeah, here we have the Asian short clawed otters. There's one having a swim underneath the log. 
and there's one here just jumped out they actually may look small but they're actually pretty strong and fast they forage for food using their hand like claws and hunt for fish and they hunt in family groups they are actually hunted for their fur and their wetland habitats are threatened by commercial development and pollution So yeah, Eric here, the male otter, is actually one of the oldest otters in the UK. He's 20 years old. He was born in 1999. And yeah, um, he's actually a little blind in his right eye, one of the keeper soldiers, due to his age. But yeah, it's pretty cool that he's one of the oldest in the UK. And we get the chance to see him. So we're now here at the seal rescue area of the sea life sanctuary which is the only one of its kind in Yorkshire and you can see there's actually a seal here which has just been rescued on the 22nd of July which is only a couple of days ago it was rescued off the south bay from Scarborough Beach and it's, only, it's about five to six weeks old and it was actually rescued because it had uh, large wounds on its jaw and it was very skinny but yeah there's space here for four different seals to be rescued, then once they're rescued, they're placed back into the oceans and rehomed. But yeah, there's mainly two types of seal, mainly found around the British Isles: the common seal and the grey seal. Up here, we have a list of all the seals that have been rescued, all the way from 2004, all the way up to 2016. So you can see a lot of them have been rescued and rehomed, which is great. There's only one here at the moment as well. There'll be more entering soon, probably, because it's around that type of year. Right, so we've continued into the outside section of the seal rescue area, and there's a nice outdoor habitat here. There are four seals here. There are There is Boo, Pendle, Ed and Manda. There's one just chilling up here on the rock. There's one swimming here up close. There is one at the back sleeping. And I don't know where the other one is. Oh, here, right in front of me. So this one's just having the nose round. So they're pretty cute, right? A nice big habitat for them. It's not too busy here today at the Sea Life Sanctuary, which is nice, as you get to see everything we wanted to see. There are some facts at the back here about the seals, which is Luke is reading at the moment. So I'll go check them out now. So yeah, here's some more information for you. We have Mando, which is the one just chilling by the rock we just talked about a minute ago. He actually was rescued from Esberg in Denmark, uh, as there's no more room for him in the seal pool there. We have Ed, he's also a male. He is one of the younger residents at the centre. He was born at Weymouth Sea Life Centre. We have Pendle, who's also a male, and Boo is also a male. But yeah, once the seals are ready to be rehomed uh, after rehabilitation, they are actually taken to the coast by the RSPCA via a boat and released into the nearby oceans, which is great. Right, so we're just inside the indoor area here at the seal um, rescue area. And like, as you can see, there's an indoor viewing area. We just caught a nice glimpse of them then. But yeah, it actually costs uh, £2,000 to rehabilitate just one seal every six weeks. So, obviously that's a lot of money every seal that comes in. So yeah, here's a closer look at the Asian clawed otters. Eric and Pumpkin having a little cuddle. Pumpkin's actually was moved to Scarborough Sea Life in September 2010. So she's been here 10 years. And Eric was lived here since 20, uh, 2000. So yeah, they were the Asian clawed otters at Otter River. And there's actually more different types of otters. There's the Asian short clawed otter that we just spoke about. There's the Canadian otter. There's the sea otter. The giant Brazilian otter, that one looks pretty cool. 
and the Eurasian otter. So yeah, that was Otter River, and we're now going to continue our dive. So we're now here at the rock pool, and unfortunately because of Covid uh, we can't touch any of the animals. It's a bit like Chesterton Sea Life. But yeah, here is a starfish. Here we have the hermit crab, this chain, pretty small, you can see how small they are when we zoom out. But yeah, let's go and explore the rest. Thanks. Hi guys. So it's time to go and check out the shops, hopefully they have some because we couldn't find any at Chessington Sea Life. Another hand sanitizer station. So yeah, there will be three different types of sharks here, the tiger shark can grow up to 4.2 metres. The Mako shark, 2.5 meters, and the black tip reef shark, which can grow up to 1.6 meters. There's a 180 degree viewing tunnel here, which is great. There's one here, which one is this one, Luke? The Mako, that's the black tip shark. It's got black tips. There's also some like fish in here as well, as you can see. Let's see if we can find the Mako shark next. That's 2.5 meters. And this could be him, maybe, but I think. Mm, I don't know. Let's continue on. So yeah, just go and see what else we can find. In the corner, there is a sea turtle, and he is between 50 and 60 years old. He's pretty cool. So yeah, let's go and continue on our journey into the tropical ocean. They're pretty. So we're now here at the Japanese spider crabs. There is one at the back here. They are pretty big as you can see. They are omnivorous scavengers and normally eat uh, decaying animals and plants. You can normally find them on the Pacific north side of the Japanese islands, but have been found as far south as Taiwan. But yeah, we're going to go around and have a closer look. A little fun fact. And in adult males, their main arms are much longer than their legs. And some other cool facts for you. But yeah, he, he is just on the wall here, I believe. So yeah, not actually better view, unfortunately. We're now at the kingdom of the seahorse. So yeah, we'll go and explore this section. Oh yeah, there's one here, behind the plant, there's one here, but yeah, it's getting pretty busy in here now, as you can see, so we're just going to go and go upstairs. Right, so we've come to check out the new 2020 attraction here at Scarborough Sea Life Centre, the Bain Forest Adventure. So yeah, this opened in 2020, so it's brand new, as you can tell, the theme looks pretty good. There are added sound effects, so I just heard some thunder sound effects go off a couple of minutes ago. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we get to experience that again. Here we have a green tree python, just on the tree here. That's pretty cool. But yeah, there's also like a little fact board over here with easy ways to save the rainforest. 
So you could have a meat-free Monday, avoid palm oil, like everyone knows how important that is, buy sustainable food. So yeah, let's go and take a closer look at the rest of the habitats and um, this tree snake. So the tree snake is a cool, this is actually a cool fact. Originally it starts off as a bright red colour, but as it matures into adulthood, it actually turns into the colour you can see now, the bright green. But yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go and see what else we can find. Over here we have some cockroaches. They can run up to two miles per hour, which is pretty cool. Whether we can see them or not. It's a bit dark in here, so I'm going to suggest... Oh, it's that one there on the top. That's pretty cool. That is an... Oh, that's actually an Asian... Ah, I don't know what that is, but it looks like something. Here we have the stick insect. Well, that's probably going to be hard to see. Oh no, it's there. I'm right on the tree here, so... That's pretty cool. They live in trees, shrubs and leaf litter. And their status is not evaluated yet. Here we have the mandarin crab. Somewhere. Can't see that one. Here we have the lamp eye conga tetra which are these fish here. They come from the Republic of Congo and live in slow moving streams and rivers. What's in this one? See, so yeah, it's really well done in here. There's about eight habitats all together. You can hear the sound effects going off now. Over here we have the monkey-tailed skink, which is a type of lizard, I believe. Let's see if we can spot it. That is the other question. I'm bad at spotting like reptiles and stuff, so I apologise. Oh, it's here at the bottom, I believe. That looks like something to me. Camouflage, as you can tell. But yeah, they live normally... Oh, there's the thunder going off. But yeah, they live normally in the Solomon Islands, which are pretty cool. And they eat leaves, flowers and fruit. Got some monkey effects going off. I don't actually think there is anything down here. I think this might just be for show. Oh no, there's definitely some fish down there. But it doesn't tell us what fish, unfortunately. Not yet, anyway. Maybe there's a board around the corner. Here we have the poison dart frogs. I don't know where they are, though, unfortunately. I really wanted to see them as well, but we saw them at London Zoo, so definitely go check that video out. As mentioned before. Oh, and here, so here, sorry, actually, this one on the right is the poison frogs, the blue poison frog. They use the colour to show off their toxicity, but they're not doing that at the moment, unfortunately. I actually can't see any in there. Unfortunately, over here, we have the giant Madagascar day gecko. But yeah, we can't see that one either, unfortunately. Do you know what that one is? That's a Over here, we have the Matter Matter. Which is a bit like a turtle. Let's go over and get a better view. They eat primary fish. They also will eat amphibians and invertebrates. And they are found in northern South America, including Brazil. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's go and see what fish we can see in here. But yeah, like I said, it's really well done here. This is brand new for 2020. So definitely come down and check it out. It's a great new addition. And it just adds something extra.
Let's go and look at the closing dart flags again because I think there might be one moving. Oh, there's something here. It's not a poison dart fox, so maybe they might have uh, changed this habitat. Oh, I just seen some, oh, this one's the gecko at the back here, sorry. Just on the tree. This one's pretty cool, so there's, that must be his food, I'm guessing. And that's where the gecko is at the back. But yeah, it does say somewhere, that the, yeah, it does say this is a poison dart fox. So yeah, strange. Wait, that was cool. Here goes the thunder again. Maybe this one's the poison dart frog, too. Strange, but yeah. And I think that is the end of the, habit uh, the main bar section here at Scarborough. So yeah, definitely come and check it out. There's some Greek species here that you might not have seen before. So yeah, we're going to go and continue our tour. So the last area of the Sea Life of Scarborough is this project building reefs area which is um, a way of sea life demonstrating how they are working with a local community in the Maldives to rebuild the coral, reef, coral reefs which have been damaged after tsunami and climate change. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Then we have over here just an area to get your photos and then we have the restaurant. But yeah, we'll just do a little review when we get out and we'll leave you with some clownfish. So we get there. The cafe actually shuts at 3 pm, so it's just shut for us, it's just gone 3 pm. Uh, they actually do cost the coffee, uh, the price is about 280. But yeah, it shuts at 3 pm, so if you want to get here early to eat, definitely make sure you're here early. But yeah, there are plenty of our seating options available. Um, they do cold food options such as sandwiches and muffins, etc. Uh, down here we have the shop. But yeah, if you want to get here early for food, definitely make sure you're here before 3pm and that's when the cafe shuts. We're now here in the shop uh, from Friday 24th of July, the face masks have to be worn. Uh, like, there's a lot of cookie toys here, for example. The penguin here is, oh the shark, sorry, the black tip shark is £8 as an example. What else have we got? Some top trunks, which are pretty cool, so awesome animals, they're cool. We've got some little bath toys. Some small toys here. So yeah, here we are, we found the pin badges. They are £3.50 each in the lanyard, which is pretty nice, it's £5. This one's nice, here the starter kit, that is £12. Obviously you have a million bash, you get 20% uh, off. But yeah, I'm just trying to work out which one I like the best. So we have penguin one, uh, a, diff a different fish one, we've got clownfish one different types, then we have the starter kit with like the sea life uh, like symbol on, which is pretty cool. We have this one as well, but yeah, they're pretty cool, so yeah, I'm going to pick one and buy one. Right, so that's our tour of Sea Life Scarborough finished. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I actually managed to get my hands on a pin badge, which is pretty cool. I've got the Nemo one, so that's pretty cool. Uh, tickets cost £19 to get in. Obviously, it's free if you're a million pass holder, so I definitely recommend coming down. It was great. It took us about two hours to go around, so it's a really great day out. Uh, you need a free book a ticket though if you want to come. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching. And if you like the video, give it a like. And if you like watching like animal videos, definitely subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.